So how do you find quality subcontractors? Well, you have to get through a lot of crap and dig through stuff to find the gold hidden in the rough, the diamond in the rough, the needle in the haystack. They're not easy to find, but when you do find them, you wanna bless their socks off. You're gonna give them all the good stuff. You wanna pay them early. You know, you really wanna take care of these guys like they're your own family. So last week I asked on Instagram, on my Instagram story, at Jesse Lane TV, by the way, how we could grow my YouTube channel. Like why, why don't I have 250,000 subscribers while I only have 20, 21,000 subscribers? And I was like, what could I do differently or more? One, one was the, the response was do a question and answer, a Q and A. So this is what this video is gonna be. So at Jesse Lane TV, if you wanna follow me on Instagram. Also, here's all the questions, so stay tuned. Well, I don't use direct mail. <laughs> that could work. Sometimes people do that when they're flipping homes or anything like that. It takes a lot of money and a lot of time to have people respond to that direct mail. So what I do is I use the internet and social media. 95% of the business that I get comes from Google. I've been the top rated GC in Jacksonville for the last six or seven years on Google. And I focus on the client reviews and so those they link over to your website and then they'd say, oh, let's check this guy out on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, wherever you want to be. And they see that this guy isn't afraid to put himself out there. He must not have anything to hide. And they already know you before they call you the first time. So social media and the internet. So advice to a young engineer that doesn't want to get his hands dirty and get that experience that you vitally need to start your own business. If you're going to be a business owner, you got to go in gotta get your hands dirty and experience let it flow through your veins the experience will flow through your blood and it's like an innate way that you make decisions later when it when it flows through your actual hands doing it so I would not recommend being your own boss or starting a general contracting company really any business without getting experience in that field now those are hot is it super hot it's good the okay that's really hot <laughs> I like spicy though, it cleans out your insides. It's very good for your mm. circulation. Gardening is not for sissies. <laughs> it is not. We'll go back to But if you like to eat. GC and Okay, can I turn it off now? Yes. Have I ever been burned by a subcontractor really badly? Well, I have. I hired this electrician one time who was like twenty-five thousand dollars lower than the other guy, and he wound up really messing up. The guys that he sent to, to sell me the project and then start the project were completely different than the heroin addicts that he sent after the fact and it was absurd and I had to hire in another electrician and I spent $50,000 just fixing and rewiring all of that work. Don't always hire the cheapest subcontractor. This is a real blessing for us. Good. So this was actually my first shop where I started my first business making custom walking canes and sticks. Now I did take out a $10,000 loan, which I paid off later, to get this started because I needed the equipment, bandsaw, the table saw, the router machine, the lacquer rig, everything I needed to make the product. But with a general contracting company, you don't necessarily need all this equipment. Unless you're a subcontracting, like a site work guy, you probably need to maybe buy a backhoe. So you should take out a loan. And I did take out a loan actually after a couple of years of owning my company to get things to the next level. Sometimes you do need to take out a loan. I wouldn't recommend it at first because you need to, as a general contracting company, be your own marketing, sales, do your own project management, do your own bookkeeping at first. The first maybe two to three years, maybe four years max. Of course, hire a superintendent, but then eventually you wanna hire out those things that you develop processes for, the project management, the sales, the bookkeeping, the marketing. Of course, maybe sales is something you always wanna stick with. I currently still do sales. So do I have construction workers as employees? Well, no, I don't. I hire construction managers. And if a superintendent is doing more than five to 10% of the the, the work, like the punch work, the final stuff, maybe door handles or whatever it is, if he's actually like hanging doors or doing framing, he's not doing his job. And so I would be very careful about that. I don't know if it's a little bit foggy, but it's, it's humid out here. Yeah. 
So how many employees do I have and how do I hire them? Well, it's like a huge point because I made some huge mistakes hiring people for their ability over their character because they can't train character like you can train ability. So now I hire for character over ability. And how many employees do I have? I have about seven or eight employees, including myself, um, you know, a couple project managers, a lot of superintendents because we subcontract everything out. So I don't really hire the workers in-house. Then I have a CTO, a chief technical officer who takes a lot of work and pressure off of my plate. And I also have a business um, partnership that is coming into my construction company. Um, 20 plus years experience, GC, he's my relative, and he has like 25 employees. And so us kind of combined, we have you know 30 plus employees and a lot of subcontractors and we're doing larger scale projects. And one tip that I would say about employees hiring and firing is you always want to hire them slow and fire them fast. Just like this burn pile is gonna go up in flames like this we'll both walk into it so do I like new construction renovations or flipping well I like all of them but my bread and butter over the years has really been a lot of renovations I've also done a lot of new construction as well but you can make a little bit more money sometimes with renovation real estate versus GC like real estate for myself versus general contracting for clients well you got to take the money from the general contracting from clients and put it into your real estate investments and then you have these two businesses I have these two businesses that are vertically integrated and so they feed off each other one pays the other and the other pays the other and so they help each other grow so where do i see myself taking this construction company i'm at eight figures do i see it going to nine figures yes i do just like this tree started as a seed a long time ago you have to start with a small thing you make your first thousand dollars and then you make your first hundred or two hundred thousand dollars and you don't buy a lamborghini because that's the stupidest thing you could do you invest it back into that hundred thousand dollar project manager so you can grow your business from there. So yeah, I do see it going to nine figures. So someone asked what my truck setup is. Well, I, a couple months ago, I did <laughs> <It's already funny>. post <laughs> bloopers. So someone asked what my truck setup is. And a couple months ago, I did order the Tesla truck because I've had the same 2014 F-150 EcoBoost, you know, wrapped with all the J Lane stuff, which I'll probably just give to an employee. Right now I'm rocking this thing, but <laughs> next, the Tesla truck, the Cyber truck, which looks completely stupid at first, but now it kind of grew on me, so I ordered one. It's the dual motor version, the middle out of the three. It'll be fully self-auto driving. I'll save time. I can email on the highway and hopefully not die. Turn it on. Oh, it's red. It's, okay. <laughs> um, I don't really want to start this. So how did I initially get my projects? And did I quit my job first or did I build clientele? Well. I just had to start by working for other people, gaining experience, and then when I quit all of that, when I had my general contractor's license, I went to Thumbtack, Home Advisor, Angie's List, to put myself out there, even though it might cost a little bit to do that. Marketing at all costs something. So got the jobs, got client testimonial reviews, photos, videos, built the website. Then people saw the website, and it's like this tree. You start with something small. This is a peach tree that I planted 15 years ago, by the way, and it's this huge, gorgeous peach tree that the Texas uh, winter froze off all the peaches this year. <laughs> but um, very exciting thing when you build something that produces fruit, like a website in your online marketing that makes big things happen later. But you gotta start small and uh, don't, you know, don't be afraid to get on thumbtack. Have I ever paid income tax? Of course I pay taxes. I do my part and I'm honest with the government. And sometimes I've even taken it in my earlier years, less of a write-off than I could have taken to then to qualify for loans because when you're when you're self-employed, the banks ask for two years of your tax returns and if you don't show income on those tax returns, you're not gonna get approved for any sort of real estate funding or business funding and the tax code is a map to invest and provide jobs and provide housing. So therefore I'm gonna build a business which gives people a th jobs and employment and employ people and I'm gonna invest in real estate. And so those things, you can depreciate your real estate and you can write off depreciation as and well your real estate is appreciating at the same time it's providing cash flow so there's tons of stuff but yes of course I pay I pay my taxes <laughs> what's the first thing I did after I got my GC license I cried <laughs> but the first thing bigger picture that you should do is find clients just like I explained with the peach tree so for everyone who wants to come work for me would love to have you go to jlaneconstruction.com slash apply Fill out the form, add a photo of yourself, your resume, and explain to me why you think you should come work for me. But we'd love to have you. We're always looking for really quality people to come work for J Lane Construction. There's a red light and a bopping light. 
and the darkness is, is there it too a dark? little bit. The, the housing market, the lumber prices, the construction market in general has completely exploded my business. I've experienced over a thousand percent growth, even probably more than last year. And it's been really exponential. And so it's affecting me because all boats rise when you know everyone's just paying the higher price the clients just pay the higher price and a clause that you should put in is material prices it's a you know subject to material price increase um, in your contracts maybe a 30-day thing maybe less because some of these things are changing every week or half a week so government versus private i have mainly done private work it's so much easier it's it's more I can feel more attached to these clients versus just this government agency that's just all about the dollars. And I've done some government stuff and I know people who do it. And eventually, maybe I'll get into it, but I have so many private clients. I have private clients reaching out to me all the time and I have so much work with them. I've done a couple government things, government contracting, and I know some people that have. It's paperwork intensive, you gotta have bonding, you gotta get a lot of things figured out, which a high barrier to entry means that it's more profitable. So you can, you can make good money but I'm making really great money with the private side. So it's kind of up to you, whatever your heart desires. So what market do I wanna be in? Do you mean like market by the area or market by a type of construction business or whatever? Well, Jacksonville is a fantastic market and maybe as far as the type of construction, hospitals would be fun. And also I really am enjoying this multifamily work that we've been doing because it plays to my future of the real estate business that I'm building, doing more multifamily work. So I wanna see myself getting further and further into that. So for everyone asking specific questions about their life, like they're 19 and their dad has a drywall company, what do I do? I mean, it, every situation is different and specific. And so I do help a lot of you guys in, in the past and I would love to in the future with consulting. So jessielaneconsulting.com, feel free to book a 30, 60 or 90 minute consulting session with me and um, <laughs> this flies. And we can just have a chat and I have helped a lot of people, would love to help you. So click the link in the description to check it out. And I'll see you in the next video. Click the bell to be notified about my next video. It's literally the first time I've asked you guys this, but I have 21,000 subscribers and like not a lot of you actually see the videos. So thanks.